And good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to Coffee with Casey. Take a little time out of every week to bring you up to date on the market, market conditions, all that good stuff. So uh, spring has sprung, right? We're into the third week of March. So how's the market doing? Um, uh, you know, we're going to get an update on that. Um, I do want to pass along some, some news. Uh, you know, Wes Foster um, died from Long and Foster. Uh, Hank Long and Wes Foster started Long and Foster long ago, probably in the 60s. They have been the staple in this area for a long time. I will tell you that Wes Foster, there's no more uh, loving guy than Wes Foster. And he was an institution for Northern Virginia real estate. He and, um, and Howard Rooks, who had Mount Vernon Realty, were the, the stalwarts all the way through this. Um, but, um, you know, uh, Mount Vernon got got bought out and and um, we lost him. But but um, you know we lost an icon in Northern Virginia real estate, Wes Foster, and he had a great vision. And um, you know this week came news that not only he had passed away, but before that news that they Long and Foster had fired um, um, Boomer Foster, who's the nephew of of Wes. Um, and the number two guy, so number one and number two guy were out at Long and Foster. Now, if you watch Coffee with Casey, you're going to kind of know why here in a minute, and I'll refresh your memory. But I will say that, um, you know, as far as people are concerned, as far as, um, you know, really good, honest people are concerned, um, you can't beat Wes Foster. And we're, we're, you know, it's a shame, but he was an icon and uh, no nicer guy than Boomer. So hopefully he falls on his, you know, he lands on his feet with, with one of these companies. <clears throat> See what happens. Let's get to Coffee with Casey. See what's going out in the market today. So let me share my screen with you and let's go and take a look at this. Okay. So spring is from, uh, you know, right this second, it feels like 2022 all over again. You know, some people think they missed the hot market. Not really. Um, the market is still there. Every house we're putting on is um, selling quickly the first weekend. Every house is receiving bids. We've had no home inspections. Um, so <clears throat> it's not as wild as 2022, but it's it's pretty close. So I'm going to start talking about why, why it's staying in. And the other shoe has not dropped, right? So in order for us to have a recession or a collapse in the real estate market, <clears throat> really both shoes have to drop, okay? First shoe is interest rates. Interest rates drive values. There's no doubt about it. If you were paying $4,500 for a, let's say, a million dollar house, now you're paying $7,500 for the same million dollar house. Uh, interest rates have, have gone up. Um, now's the time for everybody to turn to seven and 10 year arms. And let me explain this. You know, a seven and 10 year arm means the interest rate payment is fixed for seven years. So if you go from six and a half to six, that means you save half a point for seven years, doesn't move. Now, after the seventh year, then it will start moving. So most people are going to the adjustable rate mortgages. Anybody that blames them for the collapse of 2008 is wrong. That is what people go to when interest rates go up. You go to a, a seven-year arm or a five-year arm, lock in your payment for five years, let us go into the recession, which is coming. And that's where the other shoe drops. Um, and, and, um, uh, uh and then you refinance when the thing. So the, the story of the spring is, you know, marry the house, date the rate. Um, we're only going to be with the rate for a short period of time. Um, and, and that's the way you have to go after it. Uh, still in a buyer's market, we're going to talk about it. But the other shoe, the first shoe is interest rates go up. The next shoe that makes the market collapse or get really soft is when inventory goes up. And you're going to see that <clears throat> that shoe is tightly tied on the foot. It's not going anywhere for at least the foreseen future. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. So, so you know, big news at Long and Foster, the head management team was, um, was fired. If you saw this chart and people were like, wow, that's a real shock, not to my listeners or not to anybody that's seen that chart. This is market share of the real estate companies. We talked about this cup of coffee with Casey's ago in that there's a different models that people have. So the Samson property model 
um, is working obviously very well because that's the percentage of market share they have. And here's everybody else. And the reason for that is Samson Properties model is to not take commissions from the agent and allow the agent to pass on lower commission rates to the sellers. <clears throat> they make their money because they have a kick-ass title company. Cardinal title is awesome and everybody uses them. We love them. Um, mo a mortgage company is First Heritage, one of the top five um, um, lenders in, in town and everybody loves them too. So they're getting a ton of business on both the ancillary businesses and they don't need to charge us money. Therefore, we can pass the savings on to the seller. Now, all of the companies you see down here, whether it's Long and Foster, this is Long and Foster's line, right? right? And basically, they have a business model. They can't change it. They got it. You got to dance with what brought you. That's what made them number one. You got to stay with it. But things are changing, right? So a company actually comes along and says, okay, we're not going to charge our agents commission. We're going to let them have, keep all the commission. They can offer better rates to the sellers. And there you go. Now, down here, you have Compass. Compass's business model, buy the agents from Long and Foster, give them a ton of money up front, kind of like the Live uh, Golf Tour. Give them a ton of money up front to come work with you, but they still have to pay that back through every commission. So they can't offer less commissions because they're paying a portion of their money back to Compass. Same with Keller Williams, same with all these other models that you see down here that are all kind of stuck. All of these models, real estate models, um, ha a portion of the money goes to the broker. And, and the agent's not paying the broker. Sellers are paying the broker. And so they have to pay higher commission rates. Now, each one of these companies teaches their agents to say, you get what you pay for, discount rate is discount service, which is a bunch of bull. I mean, that's absolutely 100% incorrect. And that's why the market share is here. These companies can deny it all they want. That chart says it all. So it does not surprise me that Boomer, as nice as he is, as great a guy as he is, they had to look at this and go, oh my God, we're losing market share and we're losing it bad. So let's talk about the other shoe. The other shoe is inventory. When inventory comes on the market, that's when the market gets really, really soft, right? No more multi-contracts, no more waiving home inspections, no more waiving contingencies, right? We've got buyers that are out there that have families that are growing. They need more space. They need more room. They need a house. Well, there's the inventory. In the first three weeks of March, right? So back in 2019, 78 homes came on the market in Vienna in that time period, in the three weeks of March. That's how many came on this one. So you can see the clear deterioration of the inventory. Now, why is that? Well, people don't want to sell a house and move up because they're going to lose a 2.5% interest rate and have to get a 5.5% interest rate and they don't want to make that move. That's why that move up market, it's just not happening, right? These are people that, the people that are putting out a mark, death, divorce, downsizing, or took a job in another town, they got to go. So that's, Basically, just the half dues are selling, um, and and the half dues are are buying, and the half do buyers are outweighing the half do sellers. So as long as the inventory is low, look at Fairfax County. It was eight twenty. Now it's five five eleven, right? These guys were up in the two eighty three hundreds. Now they're at two hundred. That's uh, Loudoun County. Here's Prince William County. It was at four hundred. It's now at two fifty. Now, Arlington, a little different market. You can see they were bouncing between 100 and 90, 100. Now they're at 65. So, you know, is the inventory there? No. Is that why the market is still strong? Yes. When the inventory comes, the market will get weak? Yes. Sellers, if you're going to put your house on the market, you want to put it on now as fast as you can, because here's what happens. These are the withdrawals, and I showed you this two weeks ago. These are the withdrawals in January, February, March, and April. That means people put their house on the market. They couldn't sell it, right? So they took it off the market. So what does that, so what does that tell you? If there's nobody withdrawing a house, everybody's buying everything they got, right? So this would be called a seller's market, strong seller's market. As May, June, July, September, October. Now, this October is usually down in here. But this is when all the price increases happen. 
So what happens is the market's going like this. And then all of a sudden the market stops and people price their house up here. When really, if they recognize by watching Coffee with Casey, that the market is, has either flattened or starting to work its way down, you need to price accordingly, right? So a lot of people just, just rode the pony. I was, I was at a, I'm selling a horse farm. You're going to be out in the plains and they had some realtors out there and, um, I said, well, what do the realtors say it's worth? I said, the realtors won't give us a number of what the land is worth. Is it 3.5? Is it 4.5? Is it, it's on the market for 8.5. So a realtor put it on the market for 8.5. They said, well, they won't tell us what it's worth. It's like, well, I can tell you exactly what it's worth, right? It's worth 3.5 plus the delta between how valuable our buildings are versus their buildings. So it, it could be 3.5, it could be 4 million, it could be 4.2 million but we got to get the Delta. So there's a value you can place on everything, whether it's commercial real estate, it's price per square foot, whether it's a house, it's adjusted price per square foot plus, plus a percentage of assessment on new homes. It's the adjusted price per square foot is what new homes. Are. So you see, whatever you're looking at horse farm price per acre, new home price per square foot, um, lot prices here in Vienna or wherever it is, how big is the house that you can put on it? What does the finished product sell for? And take 40% of that. That's what the lot is worth. So, so there's a way to establish value on everything, right? Let me show you how effective it can be. So we can put a price on every house in the markets that we're in. So let me take you back on the market. Let me take you back online. Let me show you something. This is an effective tool. And I'll tell you why it's an effective tool, because I use it. And I use it a lot. So if you go to caseysampson.com, you hit market snapshot, you come to this page. So I'm at breakfast at the Vienna Inn. My, uh, the guy says, yeah, my neighbor's selling his house. I lean over on my phone. I say, what's it worth? You know, or, or what's he selling it for? So he gives me the address. I come in here. I look on my list. And sure enough, there it is. Right there. Right? So in a market where everything's selling, everything's selling fast, he told me they put on the market for 1.2 million. So what this is, is this is the Vienna market between a million and a million 25. This is the whole town. Go back 30 days. What's happened in 30 days, the average size price. And what I do is I establish what is the customary value of all of these homes based on the sales. Adjusted price per square foot, percentage of assessment. The model is accurate to one half of 1%, okay? Very, very accurate. So you apply that number, whatever that number is, to all the houses in that, in that category. And it will give you the customary value for the house. So I immediately looked down, here's Carmichael Drive. I said, well, I've got it at a million 86 customary. It's on for $1.2 million. Well, it's a good house, okay. I've got it for 1.86. So what happens? It sits on the market, sits on the market, and then after 21 days, didn't sell, they drop it to 1150, right? So now they're, they're in what I call the death spiral. Now you're starting to work your way down, right? There are other agents that are smart, and they're going, okay, let's say it's worth a million one. Um, we'll test a million one, and if we don't get it, drop it to a million fifty, or even drop it to a million dollars, and let every, where the buyer pool is six times bigger, under a million, and then let everybody bid the living hell out of it. And we'll see. If it's worth 1.2, the bidding will dictate that, right? The job of the realtor is put the price on the house that will drive the traffic to the house. It's very simple. So, so if you are in one of our markets, like let's say you're in uh, Willisford or you're in Minion Valley, you're in Haymarket, you're in Virginia Run, you're in Vienna, Oakton, right? So you can come to this and just pick the house you're looking at. Let's say, let's say you're looking at new homes. I'm looking at a new home between 1.75 million and $2 million. There they all are, right? Now these are, here's the customary value of each one of these houses. And this will tell you, is that house underpriced or overpriced? Now, I don't mean to be a chump about this, but these are all active, coming soon, active, 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 right? All of them are overpriced. All of them, every one of them. 
So this is telling you that customary. So, so what does customary mean? Again, if it's a teeter-totter, customary means this is the price per square foot of the average house. Now, if the lot is good and premium and schools and craftsmanship and builder and upgrades, then it moves up the ladder. If the house is a production house and it's really not well built or it's got a bad lot or the lot's got, got hair on it, which is what we call it, I'm on a double yellow line. I'm back into neighbors. I get the Beverly Hillbillies next door. You know, whatever. You know, old Vienna meets new Vienna. Old Centerville meets new Centerville. You know, whatever the lot premium would be. If it's good, it goes up. If it's bad, it goes down. So when you're looking at a house, you know, so I'm analyzing a house and I'm saying, well, that house is, uh, you know, builders telling me it's it's what it should be. It's and I'm looking at this and I'm going, no, it's two hundred twenty five thousand more than it should be. I mean, and that lot is doesn't warrant a, a two hundred twenty five thousand dollar premium. So there's a value on every house in Vienna. And if you want to know what it is, or Oakton, if you want to know what it is, then then look here. So I mean, I don't we don't publicize this a lot, but. But we're going to start to because the model is very, very accurate. So anytime somebody says, hey, this house went on the market, all I do is open up this snapshot. I figure out what the customary value is, and then I can determine whether that house is underpriced or overpriced. I cannot tell you how much I use this. Every time a buyer wants to buy a house, we look here. Every time a seller you know, is looking at a competition, uh, a competitor coming on the market, all they got to do is look on this. I'll tell you what it's worth. Right. But again, we could tell you what its customary value is. Now, listen to this. It takes a qualified realtor to determine whether this thing is going up or down and what value to put on that. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> we had a $2.5 million house. They want to put it up for $2.5 million. I evaluate the house. Customary value is $2.25 million. Okay. In the backyard, they have this massive pool and, and just incredible um, hardscaping and the lots of premium. It backs to woods and backs to conservation land. It's like, oh my God, it's a perfect lot. There's half a million dollars in the backyard. So you don't give them half a million. You only give them half of that. So that's $250,000, right? So, so I tell Ferris and the seller, I was like, we're good. I'm in, you know, 2.5 is what it should sell for. It sold for 2.255 million. So we got 50,000 over the 2.5 million sold in the first weekend. Do not tell me big homes take longer to sell. And, and I'm trying to be nice about all this, but you know, when I'm out at this horse farm and I can see clearly that the homes that did sell sold at $38,000 an acre and the ones that didn't sell are at $67,000 an acre, $70,000 an acre. And the, uh, the, the seller says, well, this realtor said this and real, this realtor said that. I have zero credibility on whatever they say when the average time on the market out there is 365 days. And you guys are pricing your houses at $67,000 an acre when really, if you just look at the actual comps, it's $38,000 an acre. So, you know, it's, it's, and again, it's, it is a bitter pill with sellers or uh, have agents that say, well, if you want to list it at 8.5, that sounds good. Let's put it on for 8.5. Well, that's at least $4.5 million over what it's worth. So, so I really don't care what some of the agents think out there, you know, in that market, or let, let me give you another example. I'll give you a perfect example. So yesterday I'm in one, I'm in uh, the plains doing a cow, uh, doing a, a horse farm. I got to wear my cowboy boots. So I was pretty cool about that. Um, everybody I think feels like they're John Dutton these days. So couldn't wear my hat, but I did wear my boots. So anyways, at night we're in Alexandria. Okay. Local realtor out there says this and says that I'm looking at it and it's like, well, only, you know, 30% of the houses are selling and they're selling at an average of 65 days. So what makes you an expert? What makes them an expert on this area? I mean, the average days on market for our portfolio is six days. It should be six days. That's when the best prices, that's when the best terms, that's when the best of everything comes in the first weekend. 
when there's six buyers or seven buyers and there's one seller, you win. So my question is, and again, I hear this all the time. Um, you know, Haymarket's famous for it. Uh, the agents said this, well, they listed 12 houses and not one of them sold. So, you know, I, I just, I authenticate what people say and I respect some people, but I have no, I just, a seller is relying and they're putting hundred thousand dollars at risk and a realtor will tell them the wrong thing. And they leave the house on the market for 75 days, 65 days. They leave the horse farm on the market for 365 days. It's ridiculous. You know, I, I'm trying to be nice about it. I'm trying to be nice about it. But there's a value for everything. And you've just got to determine what the value is. And when somebody tells you something, if you're a seller, if somebody tells you something, then you have to authenticate that whoever's telling you that knows what the hell they're talking about, right? So that's my two cents worth. I've got to go. I've got an important uh, deal with my daughter. So I've got to have to check out a little early today. You've been listening to Coffee with Casey. My name is Casey Sampson. You can reach me at 703. 508-2535. Even if you're not using us and you have a question or problem, give me a call. 703-508-2535. Or you can reach me at Casey at CaseySampson.com. To check out the value of the homes and the markets that we do, what the, what the customary value is, go to CaseySampson.com and just click on the market snapshot. Go find your area and you'll see all homes active, pending, sold, how long they're on the market, what their customary value, are they under market value, are they over market value? You can see it all by going to our market snapshot. We'll see you again next week. Bye now.